I really feel that now is the time that you really need to be preparing more. You need to be preparing physically, mentally, and most importantly, in your heart. Because things are happening really fast. Let's talk about it. So I will always remain positive in all of my videos and encouraging to you because that's important in times like this. I've got a list of notes today and I'm finding it very difficult to be succinct in what I tell you because there is so much going on. We're gonna talk about personal finances and the economy again today because there's a lot, a lot happening. And there's other things happening to distract you from it. And I talked to you before about getting distracted and to focus on those really important things that relate to biblical prophecy. And a lot of those really egregious, nasty, morally disgusting things that are happening are just a distraction from the big moves behind the scenes. And the number one way you can control any group of people is to control their money. And that's what's happening right now. We're not gonna talk about types of governments. We're not gonna talk about D's. We're not gonna talk about R's. We're not gonna talk about fascists and communists and all of that because all of them at this point are authoritarian and they want to control everything. And they play two different sides, but they're on the same team behind the scenes. And if you're familiar with what's called the Hegelian dialectic, that's creating two opposing forces that look completely different from one another, but they have the same end goal. And the people in the middle who created them don't care about either one of the issues on both sides. All they, can, all they care about is power, control, and money. They don't care about you or I. Okay, now let's talk about this big news. A year and a half ago, 722 banks informed the Fed that they had over 50% in unrealized losses. That is an insane number. That is something that you need to go out and you need to look at. They were under, uh, it's kind of like a gag order. Nobody could talk about it for that year plus, but now the information is coming out that these banks are almost all insolvent. They gambled in the market and they lost big. They lost on mortgage-backed securities. You've seen how many Banks have failed this year so far, Credit Suisse, Silicon Valley Bank. But the amount of money that those banks combined, like right now in the United States, is over $530 billion. That's a half trillion. The total losses for banks in 2008 was $520 billion. So already through three or four, or four I think it's four banks, in the United States that have collapsed so far, it's greater than the losses for 2008. Now in 2009, more failed, and I think a total of 147 banks failed throughout 2008, 2009, and 2010. It might be a little bit more than that. But if we've already got just four banks in the United States that have failed, we are in for a world of hurt. This is not recession, this is not depression level, this is a complete collapse. And if you combine that, and I want you to go out and look for this news, because it's really important. If you combine that with the BRICS nations trying to get rid of the dollar as the reserve currency in the world, especially China leading this, we've got a big problem. So what do we do about it? Well, this is where personal finance comes in, and this is what I wanted to talk about today. Again, I've talked about this before. Get yourself out of debt, whatever you have to do. I don't care if you're delivering pizzas to two o'clock in the morning, if you can do it, do it. I don't care if you, after your white tie and, uh, or a white shirt and tie job, go and work at Walmart, stock and shelves until late at night, do it. Make whatever you can while you can, because it's not gonna last for long. And I told you it was difficult for me to be succinct in this video because everything ties together. I wanna to talk about everything, but try to keep on track. And that's super, super difficult. So many companies, including big banks, are in bed with the government. And that is straight up fascism. Now, I know I wasn't gonna talk about that, but I want you to recognize the things that are happening. And 
even though that's a tenet of fascism, it's authoritarian in nature, and that is simply to control you. You saw the other day, I think it was Chase Bank, they purchased some of the failing banks, and they are going to continue to do something. The big six banks in the United States are going to buy up, buy up all the little ones that are failing and it's going to be a bloodbath of small banks failing all over the place regional banks first and then smaller ones now i am not a financial advisor but i'm going to tell you what we are doing and that is not keeping all of our eggs in one basket so we have three or four different banks so if one goes down we've got some backup in some others and i am not going to rely on the fdic which is going to be uh, pretty much out of money pretty quickly if these larger banks keep failing. I'm not gonna rely on the FDIC to reimburse my money. So if you have the opportunity, please diversify your banks. And again, my grandma's old term, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's just what we are doing. We are also purchasing assets. So we are paying off our house. I still do have that debt. Yes, I do have a mortgage, um, but it's rapidly going down because I'm throwing everything at that that I'm not throwing at other small projects like this. And that leads into something else that I wanted to talk about. Where should you put your money right now? Well, in my opinion, and what we are doing is we are waiting to buy larger equipment because I believe, and I see it in the car market, I do need a new truck, but I am not buying a truck this year, absolutely not. Maybe toward the end of the year because from what I see from the car companies and they are underwater really badly with um, a lot of inventory that they bought at really high prices at auction and that is really in depth and you can go check out the Economic Ninja if you want to hear his insider information. He has a friend on the inside of the car industry and there's some other ones. I think Car Edge is another channel that, uh, that talks about how badly the car industry is doing right now. That's why we're waiting to buy bigger equipment like another tractor, a truck for the property, and a big trailer. But when it comes to smaller things, we are snatching them up right now because I think there's going to be a shortage in small goods, tools basically. And that's really what you need to run a, hom a homestead really well is a bunch of tools to do all these little jobs all over the property. I'm grabbing a couple extra shovels and some handles. I did a video a while ago about consumables that are really important to have around, like pieces of PVC uh, pipe to uh, repair water lines on your property, stuff like that. If you're interested in that, click on the video at the top of the screen. But with every dollar we don't put toward our house right now, we're gonna snatch up some small equipment like that, some small tools. And everything that I've read and heard on the economic side of the news tells me that probably this fall, things in the auto industry and the banking industry are really gonna crash down. So there's gonna be a lot of less expensive equipment out there that you will be able to snatch up. Additionally, homes. Now I know a lot of you still live in the city and I wanna give you encouragement. If you cannot get out right at this second, Start looking for property. The real estate industry is really in a bad spot right now and it's all coming to a head. So I think you're gonna be able to find some really inexpensive, affordable, beautiful places in the country this coming fall, maybe a little bit later than that. But again, don't listen to me, do your own research. Now to add in for my Christian friends and anybody else who wants to listen to it, I want you to look at Revelation 18, 11 through 20. This talks about the great merchants of the earth and that they align themselves with Babylon. Now, if you're a student of the Bible, you know who Babylon is and I want you to go and study who that is. It's and the beast power of Revelation. It is very clear on who it is. And again, I'll say, Every Protestant religion before 1950, mid-1950s, knew exactly who it was. And it basically says, woe to those great merchants because they followed Babylon and they followed money and their love of money. And it will all completely disintegrate. But friends, I also want to pay attention. I hear so often that uh, we're going to be raptured out before the tribulation. Friends, that's just not biblical. If you look in Revelation, the people who keep the commandments of God are the ones who are persecuted. And they're the ones who God protects. They are God's people. So that is certainly a tribulation. And if you look throughout the entire 
entire Bible, the entirety of Scripture, God's people always went through tribulation. They always went through the storm, but God was with them. He didn't take the storm away. He took them through the storm. And additionally, in Revelation, we know that God's people, that small remnant of people who keep the commandments of God, will not be allowed to buy or sell. So if you are not allowed to buy or sell, that's certainly a tribulation. You're not going to be able to uh, buy food for your family or buy electricity for your family in your house or whatever it is. And you need to prepare for that now. Just like Noah was told to prepare by building the ark, even though everybody else thought he was crazy and he was preaching for 120 years that a flood was coming and nobody had ever seen a drop of water come out of the sky. He was listening to God. So I want you to listen to him as well. And you see this behind me? This is also an ark. This is an ark from a time in the near future when God's people will not be allowed to buy or sell. And the biggest thing we buy to sustain our lives is food and water. So like I said, you need to prepare your heart for that. You need to prepare your mind for that. And you need to prepare physically for those types of things. So again, friends, it's not fear, it's faith. By faith, Noah built the ark for the saving of his family. And he was moved to do that. You can't just sit back and say, ah, God will handle it all. He could, but he wants that symbiotic relationship with you to move with fear and trembling because of his greatness and to move with faith to do the things that he's told you to do and warned you about. But friends, I don't want you to fear. I want you to move with urgency though. And I want you, if you can't grow your own food right now, to store up a little bit. Don't store up a bunch and become a hoarder because violent hands can come and take that from you. But have a little bit in reserve. God will provide. Learn how to grow. Do it now. Okay, friends, if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. And remember to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Now go click on these videos right here, which shows you how we installed our rainwater reclamation system. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time.